Warm greetings to all that are joining us here at St. Andrew's Memorial Anglican Church in Kitchener for this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Pray that this is a meaningful time for us to raise up our hearts and our lives and our minds to God. Let's begin with uh, a well-known prayer of preparation. We pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. such love toward you that we loving you above all things may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire we pray through jesus christ our lord who is alive and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever Amen. i share a reading from the acts of the apostles 
While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things. Whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord, Lord, judge, judge the, the world with righteousness, and the peoples with equity. A reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by, the, by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, uh, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. According to St. John. Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that my Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Thank you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. You heard that as Matthew read it uh, just a few moments ago from the first letter of John. That's a pretty big claim, and it might not sit right with us. Firstly, because it seems to grate against what we keep hearing these days about the decline of the church. We don't feel particularly victorious much of the time. Often we're pretty worried and guilty. Secondly, that language of conquering, it might make us uneasy, whether it's from lessons we've learned from science fiction, I'm thinking of War of the Worlds and Mars Attacks, or maybe from fiction's opposite, history, the history of the powerful seeking to conquer others. There's a few words I always remember from Archbishop Michael Peer's apology to Indigenous peoples for the residential school systems. He said, I'm sorry more than I can say that we tried to remake you in our image. At some point, the church had adopted the stance and the strategy of conquest. So the question that's put before us now and in so many other situations is how do we read hear and interpret these texts. I recall probably as a teenager giving a children's story in church and comparing the Bible to the instruction manual that I would consult for a video game, something that group could relate to. Now I don't think I could abide by that analogy these days. Yes, our Bible does certainly contain instructions, but I think if the life of faith was as simple and straightforward as button combinations, you know, hold A, press B, up, down, X, Y, uh, well, I think that God could have inspired a much more succinct manual for us. And if you've ever seen a manuscript of the biblical text, you'll note that there's no punctuation and no spaces between words. Imagine opening uh, an instruction manual and finding that. So without going too far down that rabbit hole though, what I'm saying is that drinking deeply from Scripture in our lives, abiding with it as people of faith, is something a lot more dynamic and relational than unthinking assent, like reading an instruction manual. 
putting tab A into slot B. Fancy word that we uh, often use when we're talking about interpreting is hermeneutic. Basically means something like our interpretive lens or our style of interpretation. Uh, that which informs our interpretation. And there's something within this little letter of John that might help us to understand the lens or the value of that author and can help us hear and interpret it today. It comes right at the end of the little reading we had. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and blood. Some scholars think that the group or the community or the church out of which the uh, gospel and letters of John arose uh, was a group that had experienced some sort of rupture in its ranks. So if this is, this is so, the thinking goes that this rival group that was competing for authority among them uh, had as its interpretive value or lens the baptism of Jesus and the descent of the Spirit that we find there. In other words, this was a more easily appealing faith without the radical notions and events of the Incarnation and the Crucifixion. It was leaning more towards being happy all the time, being spiritual. That could be why the Gospel and this letter start out very similarly, talking about the Word becoming flesh and actual flesh and blood people being witnesses to this. And the letter writer reminds us here, yes, there is the baptism, there is the spirit, but we cannot forget the blood. When we approach scripture and when we approach the world, we as Christians always have before us the image of the cross. And so when we get all anxious about our future, remember the earliest followers of Jesus and how they must have felt horrified at the crucifixion in thinking that their hopes and dreams had ended, but they found that God worked through that. When God came into the world, how did the world respond to that? The Gospel of John has as its response, he was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. And more than that, the world put the maker of the world to death. That's how humans so often respond to love and to beauty. And this maker of the world willingly endured that. And as Jesus, in the Gospel story, approaches the time of his betrayal and death, he uses again and again the language of abide and commandment and love, as we heard today. If we abide in the, in the cross as our sign and respond to human need as Jesus did and go into the world and serve humbly as the Word did, emptying himself of power to become flesh like us, then we may realize that to conquer the world is not about plunder or destruction, but about love and self-giving and sacrifice. Maybe it's about conquering our innermost inclinations, the inclinations that nailed Jesus to the tree. And to guide us along this harder road, we do have something. We have our baptism, but not just as a symbol of purity to separate us from others, but as our participation in Jesus' death. And we might look again or think back to our baptismal vows and find that they talk about loving our neighbor, about resisting evil, about loving God, and abiding in the prayers and the practices of the church. It's a curious kind of conquest from below. It's not about separation so much as solidarity. It's about, well, we might say it's like adding just the right amount of salt to a meal to make it perfect. It's like the yeast that in a hidden way makes the bread rise. It's like the mustard seed that grows into a tree that ends up providing a home for the birds. It's a curious kind of conquest. 
So as we might sometimes struggle these days and feel frustrated about what we can, or mostly what we can't do right now, we're reminded and reassured today that we are called to change the world, yes, and if we are to believe it, it's our faith that brings about that victory. The remaking of the world, it starts inside each one of us, because that's the crucial part where we work out with the values, the lens, and the heart through which we will approach each other and the world outside of ourselves. So while we might not be able to go out in the way we would wish, in this time, we are challenged and called to go deep within. There is a whole world within each one of us, and much mending to be done there. I am giving you these commands, Jesus says, so that you may love one another. Spirit, 
He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. of love. Seeking to be true friends of all, we offer our prayers on behalf of the church and the world. I invite uh, all gathered at home to respond to, O oh God, giver of love, with hear our prayer. O oh God, your love is in motion. We praise the strength of your love. Where there is hunger, raise up your love. Where there is hurt and persecution, empower your love. Where there are false prophets, proclaim your love. Where there are lies, speak your love. Inspire your church that it would live out its mission of love. And we pray for our Bishop Todd. You know, pray also for Bishop Susan Bell in the Diocese of Niagara, and for Archbishops Anne Germond and Fred Hiltz in the Diocese of Moosonee, and for our Lutheran friends, for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Winnipeg Central Area and North Areas of the Manitoba. Northwestern Ontario Synod. O God, giver of love, hear our prayer. Where nations are angry and plot harm against one another or against its citizens, O God, bring love. Where governments deceive or fall short, bring your love. Where powers destroy what you have made, bring your love. Hear us as we lift up in our prayers this day the Anglican Church of Kenya and all peoples striving to live compassionately in this difficult time. O oh God, giver of love, hear our prayer. Where the churches alienate one another, Bring your love. Where our fears keep us from offering Christ to all those in need, bring your love. When our assembly is marked by division, bring your love. Through your Holy Spirit, equip the people of our parish and diocese for the good you would have us do. On this day, we pray that you would help us to understand more deeply your love for us as a good mother loves her children in Jesus' guiding arms as a hen that gathers her chicks. May the love we experience here on earth be a gateway into the mystery of eternal love. And for those for whom this day is difficult, grant them your grace and comfort. Hear us as we lift up in our parish cycle of prayer, Bernadine Hall. And in our diocesan cycle, we remember St. Jude's, Mount Bridges, St. Andrew's, Muncie, Zion Church, Oneida. O God, giver of love, hear our prayer. O Lord, increase our affection, increase our compassion, and increase our joy. Show us those we do not see. Especially we pray for Jason, Ellen, Danielle, Yvonne, and Joe, Rob, and Rita. Dennis, Sue, Christina, Kylie, Ron, Jeremy, Justin, Rudy, Heather, Leah, Iris, Nevin, Ilya, Anastasia, Josiah, Irene, Wayne, Judy, Luke, P. 
Peter, Mike, Rebecca, Shaylin, Jess, James, Debbie, Ian, Alex, Joshua, Al, Marilyn, Pat, Bob, Tracy, Rebecca, Sandra, and their family, Michael, Melanie, Melissa, Cindy, Louise, Lynn, Jim, Ken, Liz, and the Mono family. In our cycle of remembrance, we recall with fondness Ed Ross Shockwell. O God, giver of love, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Guide us in the path of discipleship, so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and deeds. Amen. Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us and help us. us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home prepared by you. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us and help us. May the Almighty and merciful God grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins. Time for amendment of life in the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. 
All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia.